coche. Até para o sempre. Estou a parar, estou a ver se está a vir aí. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'll be answering uh, a few questions about my life in the Czech Republic. I asked you last week to send me some questions. Um, they're all about the Czech Republic, so uh, this video is for my Czech friends or for the people who are interested in the Czech Republic. So if it's your first time around, my name is Lenny, I am Orlenka in Czech. I am a Dutch mom. I lived in the Czech Republic, studied in the Czech Republic, um, visited the Czech Republic many, many, many times. Uh, so I know a little bit about the culture and about the people and about my life there. I'm just telling some stories. So yeah, I made quite a few videos about it. I will link them all down below in a playlist. If you're interested, go watch them after this one. Uh, and if you came back, hi, thank you for your loyalty and support. Um, I mean, you know, you Czech friends have been so nice and supportive to me. Um, I'm really grateful for all your nice comments and I love to read through all your messages. I'll be answering some questions today, uh, questions that you sent me in earlier videos. Um, but if you have more questions, don't hesitate to leave them all down below in the comment section and I'll make another Q&A video after this one. So if you don't want to miss any future uploads, make sure you are subscribed. If you're not subscribed yet, it's completely free. And uh, yeah, let's start with your Q&As. Um, so I just wrote them down. I will read them and I will be answering them. I didn't prepare this video, so this is very pure, uh, very honest. Um, I'll just read the question, I'll answer it. Just what comes up in my head or in my heart. And uh, yeah, we have to go with that today. So Czech movie I like. Is there a Czech movie that I like? Uh, no. Yes, there is actually. Um, wow. I don't really think I've ever seen like a real, real Czech movie because in the Czech Republic, all the videos were in Czech and my Czech was not as good as, you know, that I could really follow the movie. Um, back in the time that I lived there, we didn't watch a lot of TV. In the Kole, we didn't have TV. And later on, I had such a social life. We went to the pub every night. We didn't need TV. So I didn't watch a lot of Czech movies. I had a Czech boyfriend for a while and I remember watching a Czech old movie I think back from the 60s or 70s or something like that. It was like a, a nice um, Moravian village, all very nice and sweet. And it was like a, a farm style, country style video. And it was really nice and very calming. And my part, my boyfriend thought it was really funny, but I didn't get any of the humor in it. So um, yeah, I think I fell asleep. Sorry about that. But I have to mention the Czech film industry was huge at the beginning of the uh, 20th century. Um, I know that uh, Barandov, which is a, a big film studio, it was very famous and there, there are great Czech movies. I haven't seen them, but I know that they are there. There is actually one movie that I watch every single year and that is Czech. It is actually um, a collaboration between Czechoslovakia and um, Eastern Germany. And it's an old movie and it's a fairy tale. I remember the name in Czech is Tři ořišky pro pupelku, something like that. Aschenbrödel, that's Aschenbrödel. If you're German, you're watching this video, you definitely know it. It is always on television on Christmas Day. That's Aschenbrödel. It is such a great fairy tale. Uh, back in the time that Czech Republic was still Czechoslovakia, they made some great fairy tales. Um, in collaboration with uh, Eastern Germany. So there was actually a Czech production. They were shot in Prague or in the Czech Republic, um, but they were uh, spoken in German. Those movies are great. I watch Aschenbrödel every single year and I think it is a great uh, movie. It is a variation on Cinderella. I love the style of it. It is not like very sweet. You know, that's, that's the girl in the movie is actually quite feministic and strong and cool and, um, you know, she's flirty and uh, the music in it is beautiful and I love the clothing and everything. So if you're Dutch and you haven't seen this movie but you speak a little bit of German or you understand a little bit of German, make sure you check out this movie around Christmas Day. It's always there on the German television and you don't want to miss this. Uh, it's one of my favorite movies. Another favorite movie is Amadeus. Shot in Prague and made by Miloš Forman, who is a Czech um, director. I think he left the Czech Republic in the 1960s after the end of Prague Spring, his life got a bit sad and freedom of speech was gone again and there was like this real strong Russian power um, everywhere. So a lot of people left the country. So did Miloš Forman. I got the chance to meet him 
um, but he was not my friend. Um, I think I wanted to be friends with him, but he didn't like me at all. I'll tell you more about this in another video um, because he was actually a guest in a hotel where I worked and somehow he didn't like me, he didn't like my face, he just, he didn't like anything about me. Um, so yeah, I'll tell you more about that and my experience with Milos Forman in a future video. If you don't want to miss it, make sure you subscribe. Um, yeah, so, but although we were not friends, he made great movies. One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, uh, but Amadeus is my favorite one. It is about the life of Mozart. Um, and if you haven't seen it, it's such a good movie. It's shot in Prague. I love it. It is my all time favorite. This video is like a must. So next question, what is your favorite Czech food and do you make any at home? Uh, oh my God, this is good. Uh, yes, I do. And this is going to be very embarrassing. So my favorite Czech food, I think there's plenty. I love a good old klobasa. I love Vidensky Parky, but they're not really Czech. I think because they're called Vienna sausages. I like a very good um, Pepsi Rizek. I love um, there was actually an assumption that I like this smajini sir. I don't know why people think that I like smajini sir. Maybe because I'm from Holland, which is a cheese country, but I'm not too crazy about cheese and definitely not about the smajini sir. That was not my favorite. I didn't like it. Um, I am crazy about goulash, but I think that is Hungarian. Um, but what I really like is the svičkova and I love the knetiki with it. I love the dumplings with it. Um, the bread dumplings, I don't like the potato dumplings as much, I like the bread dumplings. So the svičkova with the bread dumplings are really nice and then a good glass of cold beer. That is lovely. You could wake me up in the middle of the night for that. And what you can also wake me up for in the middle of the night, I cannot, I cannot say this, yes, I'm going to say it, is shunko flecky. What? Yes, shunko flecky. If you're not Czech, Maybe if you're Czech, you notice from your early childhood that maybe your mom or your grandmother made shunko flecky for you. Um, I loved it. So I had a Czech boyfriend for a while and he lived with his parents in a little village near to Prague. And his dad was a great cook. He made the best rizek, super, super crispy and nice. Um, and he also made, he made shunko flecky once. He, they didn't know that I was going to be a guest because then he would have never made it. But we came unexpected and there was shunko flecky and he asked me if I wanted to try it. He's like, you know, this is a dish from childhood, you know, like when there was no food in the house, but we had some meat and we had some uh, some pasta and, you know, we mixed it together with some eggs and some milk and, cre and some cream and, and like when we didn't have anything uh, and we eat it with some cucumber salad. And I was like, yeah, I'd love to try it. And I think that was the best thing I've ever tried. You know, those are my favorite ingredients. I love eggs and cream and bacon, especially when it's mixed together in a quiche or something like that. But it's shunko flecky. I love it. I tried to make it a couple of times in the Netherlands, but somehow I never managed to make it as good as my boyfriend's dad. Um, you know, I would love to have, to have it one more time and that he could really show me how to make it. Um, because here in the Netherlands we have different kind of pasta, but we don't really have the flecky and I think for the texture in the dish You really need those thin square size flecky. So uh, yeah, if you know this dish definitely give me leave me a comment down below if you also like it um, I'm a bit embarrassed to say this out loud because if I talk to a Czech person and if I say I like shunko flecky Then I like I don't say this out loud because this is a very cheap dish This is not something we serve normally, but man this is home cooked food. I love it. So that is actually a dish that I make at home. I make goulash often. I think goulash is, sometimes it's misunderstood. People think that goulash is from the Czech Republic, but I think it's Hungarian actually. Um, there is uh, the Czech sweets. I love the Czech sweets and the Czech um, pastries. Um, I'm not too crazy for the chlebičky. Maybe some people will unsubscribe now. No, seriously, I, I'm not too crazy about that. Um, and but in general Czech food great love the dumplings love the bread um, they put kmin on basically everything I'm not really crazy about the kmin you really need to get to you you need, really need to get used to that taste that taste is not the taste of kmin is very specific and the first time I had it I was like what's this I don't know this taste I don't like it they put it on the potatoes they put it on the bread they put it on the vegetables they put it everywhere kmin 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 not too crazy about the kmin on everything, 
but a good boiled potato with a little bit of cumin on it, it's nice. And the Czech bread is very nice also. What is your favorite drink except for beer? Uh, wine. I am a, actually a wine drinker and the Czech Republic has some great wine. Um, the white wines are really excellent. There are some really good white wines uh, and also some red are nice. Um, I know a winemaker, Jaroslav Springer, um, he made quite a few very nice wines um, that I really enjoy. I love a Matonku Prosim. Uh, yeah, Matoni is, Matoni is a great sparkling water. Um, the Kofola is not really my taste. I love Becherovka, which I've talked about in another video. Um, and I think there are some great health, health benefits and it has quite a healthy recipe in it. Uh, made out of herbs, so that cannot be bad for your body. And I love Slivica. I think it's a good old digestive after a heavy meal, a Czech meal with a lot of meat and dumplings and not so many vegetables. Um, I think a good glass of cold Slivica is ex excellent to give your uh, digestion like a kickstart. Um, yeah, good old Slivo, nothing wrong with it. Mm, favorite beer? I like Krušovice. I like Pilsner Urquell, I like Starop Um I'm not really too keen on the dark beer. Uh, I think when, when you go to Ufleko, of course, you know, you have to drink dark beer, but uh, I'm more like a, a blonde girl, so I like blonde guys and I like blonde beer. I don't know. Yeah, so Krušovice. My favorite bar, man, Lutzerna. I think that place is my ultimate party place. If I think about having a party night out, Lucerna is the one and only place that pops up in my head. I wanna go there again. I want to go there even when I'm 80 years old. I want to dance on the 80s, 90s party. I want to drink beer uh, and enjoy the place. I think the atmosphere is great. I hope it will still exist after this pandemic because I know um, bars and restaurants and discotheques and everything, they struggle um, with this stupid COVID-19 pandemic, which I'm really sick and tired of, but you know, all we can do is just wait till this shit is over. Um, but Lutzerna, definitely my favorite bar. What is your favorite place in the country besides Prague? Well, I can't really choose. I think there are many. I love the little villages in Moravia. I love um, small towns like Mielnik and Telch and um, I love Czeski Krumlov. Uh, but I also like all the castles, you know, Hluboka, Karlstein, Konopiste, um, you know, I think there are so many historical places and castles and maybe that's why there are so many movies shot in Prague. The nature is outstanding. It is really lovely. If you haven't discovered Czech Republic as a, um, a family vacation destination, uh, you should definitely go there. A lot of the nature is very unspoiled, very nice. If you have dogs, that's a paradise. Um, yeah, so uh, I think we haven't been there as a family yet, uh, but that's definitely on my list to go and travel uh, with my family, do road trips in the Czech Republic. Um, I love the mountains. I cannot really choose, but if I have to choose a favorite spot, I think Krumlov, because I think the atmosphere is really nice there. Do you listen to Czech music? I do, and I have um, a few Czech CDs that I found uh, in a house move, and I put them aside because I want to make a video about that, about some Czech stuff in my Dutch house. I promised to make a second episode of that video about Czech things in my Dutch house uh, once we've moved, uh, and I will do that after summer, so I think it is about time to prepare that video, and then I will show you some of the Czech CDs that I have, that I listen to. Um, to say a little bit about that is I love the Czech language for singing. Um, I'm not a professional singer, but I made a video about me singing the Kredu Mufmoy as a lullaby for my kids. If you haven't watched it, go check it out. Um, but I think singing in Czech or hearing people sing in Czech, it is a beautiful um, language. Yeah, I don't want to say too much about it, but yes, I do listen to Czech music. Uh, not too much, but I have some CDs that I really love and I would never get rid of. I would not throw them away. Um, I would probably keep them for the rest of my life, even though there is no device where you can play CDs on nowadays anymore. Who has CDs anyway? Well, I do. Um, did your husband and your kids start using Czech words too? Um, not really. 
But the other day, I heard my son, my eldest son, saying a very bad word in Czech. And I'm like, oh my God, I need to change me swearing. The other day, I just hit my head against um, a wardrobe. That happens to me. I'm, I'm a clumsy person. As a reflex, I said a very bad word. And I use that word sometimes. And it's a very nasty word. I don't want to repeat it here on YouTube. But it's the same word with the same meaning in Polish. Then maybe you know what I'm talking about. And then the other day I heard my eldest son using that same word. And we have a lot of Polish people in the Netherlands. We had actually a worker uh, who did some painting in this house who was Polish. So uh, I'm like, oh my God, you cannot say this out loud. You really have to. Uh, so I have to mind my words. I cannot say this. I can better teach them nice words in Czech. Like, lasko, milačku, um, stuff like that. Prdelku. Uh, yeah, so uh, I think there are some more questions, but... Hele, musím jít na záchod. Počkejte, prosím. Já... I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. Is there a Czech sentence that you still remember? Yes. Um, oh, I just had a candy. Stritch, prst, skrt, skrk. Stritch, prst, skrt, skrk. And... Ukončete prosím vystup a nástup. Dverze se zavírají. I think I've got to stop. I think this video is, is, is getting way too long and I know that it's boring to watch. So uh, I'm gonna stop right now and I'm gonna leave the other questions for next time. Uh, so if you have some more questions, leave them down below in the comment section, as I mentioned before. Um, yeah, for now, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope to see you next time. And uh, yeah, stay safe. Bye-bye. Ciao, ciao. Nascla.